this beach is loaded. Because we have already come back to the boat and unloaded a whole wagon. Oh, this one is alive. Seabirds. What? Murex. That's about a eight incher. And this is what stopped me a while ago. No shell up behind. <laughs> this is a gorgeous one. There's so much to see. He's alive. He's alive. I'm not gonna mess with him. So there are creatures of the sea that do eat these shells. It's all about the journey. Nice. There's something to put your little shells in. Just the way it is. Quahog clam. Very that educational. Is, check out that beauty. The sound of the freedom. I'm gonna let you check this one. And these little oyster sets, they are so cool. What are we gonna do with all these shells? Well, huh? look at them and love them. This is like a holy grail of shells for us out here. Hi guys, thanks for clicking on Salty Reflections video. We are on a barrier island beach in South Carolina and we are about to go treasure hunting. If you have missed the first part of this video, make sure you check it out because we have already come back to the boat and unloaded a whole wagon full of beauties. So you see our trail right there. We're gonna head back out and go where we haven't been before on this beach yet. That's right. We have had a welk of a day so far. This it beach, has been shell of palooza. This beach is loaded. I'm talking about loaded with treasures. And this is just a true video of just a beach walk, a beach journey down this beach. Just having fun and looking at the specimens of shells that we find and the other treasures that we see out here on this beach. And keeping the ones that we love to collect, right? That's right. Check out these little wildlife prints the little sea critters sea birds got one little bird a little bit bigger bird and i see birds all along and this is we're getting out here and see this um high tide area right here or this area right through here where a lot of the stuff actually washed up the big shells the debris that storm has left a ton of stuff down through here. And just look at this, look, you know, trail of shells that we're on. Trail of shells. That's right. So we actually just came past a few days ago, a um, flooding in this coastal area. It, it was a little expected. It kind of got us by surprise because we weren't really watching it. They didn't really name it a hurricane or a tropical storm, but it was just below the wind speeds to reach tropical storm in our area. So it did leave quite a bit of debris washed up on the shore. And here's part of a horseshoe crab or a horseshoe crab shell covered in barnacles and other debris. Let's go this way. All right. Well, I, I see a few things right here I want to gather. So he's calling me that way, but I see a couple things. Oh, this one is a live little critter. So I'm gonna you see his trap door. It's kind of covered in um, sand, but. What about that? The sea pork. Sea pork. And that, that sea pork, it has a consistency of like a jam or, or a rubber. That's right. And check this guy out. Nice whelk there. And I'm gonna let Oliver hold this right here because I'm gonna take this guy back down to the water's edge. We had found a live one already, so. Wow. Such beauties. I can't I'm even get away. You. It's just loaded with shells. There's another and right, there's check, right check there. Check this one here out. Right this, well, let me get this one that I spotted right here. I wanted to get this one because look at that look at that orange in it <laughs> that's about a eight incher loaded Just picked up all these this beach is loaded loaded with the shells that we like to collect and a paper fig shell and you can see why they call it the paper fig it is so thin we don't really find these much here on our beach at all really Back 
Meet us on back down this way, Steph. She's gonna go down there and release that um, live shell. She can't get down there though. She's just picked up a huge channel whelk. You get to see that when she comes right back up here with us. She's wanting me to venture from up here in the high tide area down to the low tide area. What? Steph, Murax, another Murax. When I'm saying another, that is the third. No, the, actually that is the fourth. We found two whole ones, one broken piece, and that one. Man, maybe it was one more. And this is what stopped me a while ago when I just cannot hardly get down to the edge to let that live guide go over there. And we missed that whelk now. No, there. that's the one I put back that was alive just then. Oh, geez. But I this is a it. channeled whelk. Beautiful. Let me see that Murex. Oh, man. Beautiful. Yeah, it's a little weathered. That's I mean, right. when I say I'm weathered, it's very worn his points are all worn down yeah these normally typically they would have long spiky points but yeah. just being tossed around in the ocean and um sponges and stuff attaching to them sucking the nutrients out there's a lot of things that can happen to deteriorate the shells right this little sea cucumber got washed up there with the wave you better deflate buddy go back out there's a ton of stuff to see and learn about on a beach right how about some of those angel wings and there's another one right over there beside it Steph is that a pair that would be a pair the opposites of each other so if you're looking at it from this direction it kind of reminds you of uh, the angel wings on the back of an angel and you right. can see how fragile they are. This one has a crack there, and this one has a crack vertically. This one has a crack horizontal, and this one is cracked up all around the edges. Oh, look at the baby's ear. Stephanie loves those baby's ears, and why do they? Why would they call that a baby's ear? Because look at how it's shaped. It look just, at the shape of it. It looks like a little tiny baby's ear. See the little ear. lobe at the bottom, the thicker part with the opening, just like a ear. And oh, is that Fred? Fred. Come Fred. Back. We made a we met one of the sanderlings oh, the last time we were out here venturing on this beach and he I mean he was right up on me, you know, every like move I took. And Steph also he was just following us around. And we was wondering if the little guy was hungry. And I think some people uh, actually that watch our videos with along with us, they they thought that little bird was hungry also the way it was doing. Of course, you cannot feed wild um, animals, it. so please do not do that. I know that that is a lot of people's natural instinct, but humans should not feed wild animals um, outside of like domesticated type situations. And what is that shell there we just get gathered up here, Steph? There's that a one... slipper snail here, looks like a little shoe, and the pear whelk, a beautiful specimen of a pear whelk. That pear whelk, they're, they're thinner than those uh whelk shells and, and the knob whelks and stuff that we'll be finding or you've seen us find they already are, and i forgot we my have basket to... already at the boat so i think i need to run back and get it no let's move on down the beach we'll make do we'll find a place to put be we'll be careful with you know she don't want her fragile shells getting broke right that's right i normally keep a little container and we unloaded our boat our basket just then we unloaded the cart at the boat and I forgot to get that part back out of the... I did unload it and forgot to bring it back. So well, excited to get back out here. And back to this right here I was showing you. That's just the innards of um, one of the cannonball jellyfish here that get washed up. That sea cucumber or another one. The telons. We have lots of types of telons in this area. So there's two different telons very common shell here along with a lot of the ones you see right here on the ground the oysters the cockles the arcs and i'm telling you the welts 
I can see it. Stop now, look, there's a big old channel well right there. How about if somebody comes here while we are down this beach and they get that big shell? She got to go get that one. Got to. We got to keep that one for ourselves. If I spot them way up there like that, I'm going to let her, either her go get it or I'm going to go get it. I ain't going to leave it behind. No shell left behind. Right, Steph? No shell left behind? <laughs> Yeah, I'm definitely with you on this. This is a gorgeous one, so I definitely we would take about the walk. To walk past that right there and leave it laying up there. Wow. And then some other boat pulls up here, walks straight to it, oh, and that. gets that chill no way. He's alive. He's alive. And I'm going to touch him with this other shell and see him draw himself back in. See his trap door. The operculum there, the brown part. And, and look at his pretty house. Wow, he's gorgeous. And the water is right here, so I'm just going to let him stay right there in the water's edge. And these trap doors on these snails, they're kind of hard, just like the shell itself. So the more he contracts himself back into that shell, he closes that opening where his predators can get to the, his, his self, yep, right? right? It becomes his protection. It's very thick, almost like um, a, a thick, thick fingernail. Check out the colors on this cockle. Nice. That's pretty. Nice. Lots of those cockles out here today. Lots, tons and tons of them. They're just everywhere. Another cannonball jelly. Got another little horseshoe crab. There's so much to see. It's just so much to see and learn about. Another pretty shark eye shell, the moon snail. He does have a couple of chipped up areas. Some people love learning about the life of the sea, the, the shells and just the stuff that washes up on the beaches. They find it very, very intriguing. And myself and stuff, we're definitely two of those types of people that we want to come out here and not only pick up stuff, but learn about it. And sometimes we don't, uh, you know, like know this stuff that we're seeing. And if we have questions about it, we always ask that somebody leave us a comment to help us out on some of the things. And we pass this guy right here. I'm not going to mess with him. The tide is right there coming in. This shell is still very dark green in color. That doesn't mean that that shell's still alive just because it's dark green in color. It, it only means that you know, it, it could be freshly dead, but we have plenty of sand dollars. And if that shell right there or that live critter has a chance to live with the tide coming on in, we're just going to leave it. And there's another right here. There's another right there. I cannot guarantee if it's dead or alive. The only way to tell is to pick it up, stuff, and let's just see if there's any of the hairy feel you moving around oh yeah i see it moving do you so he is still okay. alive there's and a way there's a way to tell you know if those um sand dolls are alive if you pick them up and you see like a hairiness on the bottom side of them moving glistening you know when your hands really really still because it'll still glisten but it'll be moving around that's right and you'll that'll be, be alive it. you'll be able to see it and another indication of um, them is you know you can see shifts in the sand. If the, sand, the shell looks like it's shifted, that is probably that it's moving along down wherever it's headed. Yeah, they're very slow. So if the sand has shifted around them in the shape of a circle or something like that, they're definitely alive. And this is a unique one. We see sea whip here all the time, but not orange. So this is a unique find. Cool find. So very cool. A really cool dark piece of coral and a little tiny baby angel wing. Yes, 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 yes. There's a lot to learn out here on these beaches. And 
We're thankful for the subscribers who's helped us learn and commented about those shells and stuff that we didn't know much about in the beginning. You can go back and look through our videos. You can go through all of them. I think we have 70 something shelling videos that we've come out and did now. And we're super excited. Over 17, 18,600 some subscribers now. And yes, we're doing it. We're doing pretty good. Thank you. So this is a purple sea pansy or some people call it a purple mushroom. It's got a lot of sand on him, but this is a living plant. See that little piece right there at the, at the tip? That's the part he tucks into the sand and holds on while he gathers nutrients out of the water. Right. Very cool. They do wash up a good bit. Get detached from the bottom and just wash in the shore. That's right. We see them a lot um, when we're shrimp trawling. Along with these guys, these cannonball jellyfish or some people call them cabbage jellyfish or cabbage head jellyfish. They have lots of things have lots of different things especially depending on where you are in the world. That's for sure. Lots of oysters. Lots yeah. of the common oysters that we see right here. That's about what we're seeing here is even this is an oyster, even though it's got that orange color, oyster shells here, and here, here, here. Um, every now and then we're seeing some arcs. The distocenia. That's a talons. Talons. I was wrong on that one. All right, a baby's ear. Yep, there you go. A jingle. Another baby's ear. And a shark eye shell. So you can see the comparison between the shark eye shell and the baby's ear. Flip it over. One sparrows down a lot deeper than the other, yep. too. One's very narrow. You can see the difference there cool. in, the, in the thickness. Tiny little well. Oh. Is it broken? It is. Right in front of that? And there's a big jingle right there, the black jingle. And another baby's ear. Little piece of coral. Tiny piece of broken coral. We don't see a lot of coral here on South Carolina beaches. Definitely not that type. We no. see the brain coral a lot more than we see that stem coral. Oh wow, this right here would So that would have been called the stem coral? Uh, like I said, there's lots of different names for different types. That's what I know that one as. Oh, okay. This right here would have been a really big pear whelk. It is broken. So yeah. a perfect little home for a hermit crab. Thin shell. They, they can't ha handle some of the journeys out here in the sea, which none of the shells can, but the big whelks, they're just a thicker shell. They're harder to break and get tossed around and beat up and battered. And these, uh, these, all these shells that you see out here, they were at once living animals. And so there are creatures of the sea that do eat these shells. Like there was a, the olive shell, which is what this is, the lettered olive, South Carolina state shell. There's a mussel that actually grows this shell. The, the olive snail grows this shell. And there are animals that eat these, not only each other, but bigger, like fish type animals. So, you know, we all know that a lot of fish like um, oysters and barnacles and that sort of thing, but they also eat these shells. And that's actually what cracks a lot of these big, really thick shells is these big fish with big teeth. Look at this. There's the angel wing, it's busted. Ah. Well, it's all about the journey, the beach journey. Oh, look at the colorations. Oh, that's a pretty cockle. And I was going to look want at it? it. It's up to you, whatever you want. Mm, well, we do have some, so. And I was using this big cockle right here as a little tray since I left my basket at home for the fragiles. Or at, on the boat, not at home. Look at this pin shell. I don't know if you can see that iridescence on it. You can see it a lot I more right there at the, the tip. Camera's picking it up. You know, it's hard for me to tell. And then on the inside, how iridescent they are. So they're kind of a, a pretty ugly type shell. Right. How about this one right here with oh, the speckles? Oh, that's a pretty one, the Florida cockle. 
That's a Florida cockle? Yeah, they have a distinct pattern on them. And a lot of the bigger cockles probably are some Florida cockles too, but they just get um, kind of bleached out. So how um, can you tell the difference? Well, this one's got all these little orange specks on it. So that's the Florida cockle. You for sure? I'm pretty sure. Okay. So the I won't other... say 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. I think you. I believe you. Um, there's lots of different types of cockles, just like all the other shells. There's lots of different that versions. That's a dark green one too. And he probably is still alive. I do. Yeah, I do see some I do, little filia. I do. Let's leave him. I'm gonna put I him mean, back it, he's not worth taking back to the house if he's alive. That's for sure. You guys, the big boat. Look at there. Look at them guys going by out there in that nice boat. Man, and they're coming in right here. This is a treacherous little spot to come around through here. It's really, really shallow where they're running across out there. And you can see it beating that big boat up and down. That's a, probably a 30-foot boat. Still tossing it around. Look at the look at the colors on that co cockle right there, Steph. And oh, this yeah, one. Look at this. Pretty. Very pretty. Both of those are really pretty. There you go. Look at the patterns on it. Nice. Oh, look at the big sailor's ear. Big sailor's ear, she says. Big sailor's ear. So this is the channel duck clam. And this is the opposite. This is a bivalve. So the other side would have been very similar to this, especially in size. But it would have had the actual little channel inside of it where you can tell um, the channel duck clam. But they get their name because they look like an ear. Is it this way? The or other way. this way? There you go. Yeah, I think it's better that the point this side like would be ear. down. <laughs> now this sand dollar here is probably deceased. He's already flipped over. I don't see any movement. Yeah, and actually the philia is actually um, already kind of washed, washed, off. washed off of this. So he is deceased. Yeah, more likely if you pick up or definitely if you pick up a sand dollar and that hairy looking philia is done gone off its back. It, the, you know, it's kind of like it's done been tossed around enough in the sand that it has worn that off because that would be a sulfur substance than the shell itself and on the other hand this one is actually still alive gotta take a quick quick little look at this fine right here but just what i thought So even though it's, it's probably, you know, really not much use to it, we, we pick up trash and if we take it home and we clean it up and it's not scratched all up and stuff, I'm sure that one of our grandkids, they really wouldn't mind where this came from, right? No. They don't mind. And guess what, Steph? There's something to put your little shells in. Yeah, we love to recycle and reuse when we can, so we don't mind it. No different than buying a pair at a thrift store or something like that, just use another olive. And this is one we haven't seen yet. This is a common shell here, but it's a razor clam. Very cool. I'm seeing some points of some welts. I see them spotted them out of my eyeball ago, but I mean, look around. You can spot a shell and miss it in a jiffy out here. Look, look at this beach. This is a beach loaded in shells, just full of them. Look up here. And we're still going to like the tides coming in. And that's why we've chosen to walk down here to this low tide section, because we definitely want to venture that area but we want to get down through this low tide section first before the tide gets on up to that point yeah these beauties will be underneath the um surf if we wait until later and i'm seeing a nice specimen right sure here for those of you guys who have come along on our videos before you know this low tide if it's really low tide 
there's still a lot of beach out here to explore so there's probably a lot of shells out here of course that we already missed this morning but this is when we could get out here that's just the way it is just the way it is look at there beautiful i'm seeing a shell a little bit different right under with some stripes and stuff that i don't think we've uh, really covered that particular type of shell today see it right here yeah. Now what is this? The Quahog clam. So this used to be part of the currency that the world used way, way, way back in the day. When there's little broken sections of this and they're ground down almost like, you know, how sea glass rounds off and ground, gets ground down. The inside of this shell naturally, before it's bleached out like this, has a purple um, hue to it and the indians used that as currency called wampum and now we use it in a lot of jewelry very that educational is, that's come from the quahog clams where, where else can you learn things like that i mean i'm sure some of you already knew though you already knew i know how it is there's a lot of smart people out here in the world we just have chosen to try to share what we know with others just to be frank about it you know we understand that some people do know the things that we're saying and we're saying a lot of things very uh, randomly and sometimes not so random on the channel but we're just trying to share information and we know it's repetitive sometimes but you know that's okay sometimes people who have never seen seashells are looking maybe right now I definitely know there are people who have never seen the beach that are looking right now so just sharing some of the useless knowledge. Look at that weld right there. She's got me running up here to get that. Oh man, we missed a big one down that way. We'll pick it up on the way back. Uh oh, it's a lie. Uh -oh. It's a lie. So I'm just transferring it even though the water's coming in. You know, if we've already picked it up, we'll get it closer back to the water. He may have got it tossed up there. I'm sure he was going to make his way back out. But I'm getting him closer to the actual low tide area. How long would it take this guy, even in the water with the water in, to move from the high tide line? Say this beach right here in particular is that it covers about 300 feet or 100 yards of area. A snail, even in the water, can they travel like at faster speeds or does it still take them? a certain amount of time to get to the area they're traveling well of course it takes a certain amount of time it takes all of us a certain amount of time to do anything but the whelk are actually very strong their their feet which is the muscle that sticks out of the siphonal canal of the whelk they're actually really strong and they can move at a pretty decent speed for a snail look at this one how do they do it do they like use it to flip their self over or they I mean... do and then they like basically use it to walk on huh like pivot back and forth between their shell and the uh, they can foot? spread their foot out. Because they only so have one foot, right? They can spread that foot out um, basically as wide as they want to. That that whole piece of muscle, they can use that whole piece um, as much as they want. So it can be very skinny and touch like a high heel, like the tip of a high heel, or it can spread out like a big part of a boot and basically pivots from side to side and walks. That's right. Check out that beauty. And I wanted to show you guys before I pick it up because I was thinking it might be alive. Maybe yes, it is. is. And I was thinking so just because of how bright those colors are. So you can see that trap door there. I'm going to put it back in the water. And that's what we do when we come across live critters out on the beach. We're always trying to our best just to lend a helping hand. And we do see a lot more alive ones when after a storm like this. So I stopped all of it right here real short because I didn't want to step on this sand dollar. It definitely has already been bleached out. And you see it's chipped along the edge right there. As happens with sand dollars, they're very fragile. And a little well here. So you can see why I thought the other one may be alive. You can see it's bright colors compared to those muted stripes that where this one has probably been deceased for a long time. Check out that piece of driftwood there. 
That's a big chunk of driftwood here though. Big piece. Be hard to get that one back home. Yeah, you'd need a big wheelbarrow for that one. Somebody to pick it up. Oh, look at here. We haven't seen any of these in a while. So who knows what this is? Leave it in the comments and let us know. I'm gonna leave it right there. And let You're you guys talk about them? it. Not at the moment. And in that respect, we'll let this jet pass by for a second. The sound of the freedom. One of the jets the military base has down here. They probably flying over training. And here in South Carolina, we call that the sound sounds of freedom or sound of freedom. That's that one. Just picking up this big big cockle. Look how big it is. Wow. But, but as I was saying, that um, one's what, five inches? Diameter? Yeah, and I see a really pretty one right there too I want to grab. Oh yeah, I see that one with the brown patterns. That's nice. Look at the stripes on it. You can definitely see the growth rings and how that shell shaded itself. It was, I guess it was living in a different area and has a different coloration there. Oh man. Tried to put a little uh, oil on our Mack wagon. The double decker here, guys. <laughs> As I was saying when I asked you guys what that was in the last video, I asked you what something was. So for all of you that guys that said that was a briar root, you're correct. A briar root. If you don't know what that is, check out our last video, and we showed you a great example of a briar root. Look how wow! Look how black that one is. I know that's what you were about to say. I'm sorry. That's okay. Do any of you guys do that to your spouses, finish each other's sentences? No, we can't help but do it. We're, we're just alike because we love and enjoy the things that each other do and that's the way it's supposed to be, right? You know how it is these days. There's so much stuff going on out, on out here now. I'm feeling kind of sorry for the new generations that's coming along behind us. Now this is a broken piece, but look at the colors in this big whelk. That would have been a beauty. Wow. Awesome. Sad to see that's broken. We find some out here whole like that too. And man, just look down through here. Loaded. Loaded, loaded, loaded. And this, the tide is pushing. It's go, why we wanted to, just like we were saying, why we wanted to get down here to this section first. It's pushing on in. This tide's going to be up here in the next 30 minutes, right up to that shell rake, I'm sure. Another little whelp. We're dealing with right now about a seven foot tide fluctuation here oh good oh, look wow that's a big man one. This, this one right here is gonna dwarf it's gonna dwarf all those shells yeah and hopefully so how about if this thing is alive it probably is oh I'm man is. come on look at this Uh, uh, I'm gonna let you check this one. Oh, it's not. Wow, what a treasure. Awesome. Fun. And I like to put my hand inside sometimes because what I'm doing is I'm not only like trying to dig some of the sand out, but I'm also checking to see if this big counter whelk right here, you see this big hump on it, the big counter whelk. I'm also checking to see if there may be a hermit crab that has tucked itself way up in there. But I know when I can dig sand out, there's no hermit crab. Y'all, you don't know how tense for that was to walk up on that shell already in the edge of this water, not knowing if there was going to be a snail in it and we were going to have to leave it behind. But look at this thing. Nobody was home. Look at that. That's a South Carolina beach treasure for sure. Nice, beautiful specimen of that kind of well. Beautiful. Right? 
can one of you ladies leave it in the comment how beautiful that shell was go ahead <laughs> oh lordy here we go again here we go again is it just because we're getting scared and these shells have been sitting up here or is it the water is making a, oh, oh that one is man alive. look how bright wah, orange wah, this wah. life looking now is and he's almost perfect he's only got one little tiny chip right there i'm but sorry for alive. saying that want 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 while you were talking stuff yeah that's okay they can still hear me and you not this so. if they didn't try to go back and focus on what steph was saying because that's that right. want 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 it was kind of just how we, you know we felt that's all right they yeah. hear me talking up they don't need to hear every word they really. don't need to hear it all do you win some you lose Ooh. some we're thankful for the guys that are out here still alive because we're hoping this big girl or guy or whatever um I, I think they actually may be asexual like that big channel whelk. Big channel uh, whelk and we know it. But I can see the opening from here. But we're thankful that these big guys are still alive in our area because <laughs> that, you know what that means? More baby shells for the baby. future. And there's another over there. Pretty knob whelk. Look at that channel whelk. Look at the curve of that opening. Look how it's, I mean, th these are not like chips or breaks that would have been a recent tiny one i don't it looks like it's still been tossed around oh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's really angled so when i'm talking about that a fresh break would be like razor sharp almost or you can see the little jagged edges but a shell can actually break and then get tossed around and you know be back to what i was talking about like you know the, the, it wasn't just recently chipped so it's a great great specimen and i was just gonna i was just commenting on the fact that this is actually the natural curvature of this shell it's not wide based all the way out to the edge like the counter welts or the big knobbed welts it actually does curve in naturally and become skinny at the bottom again here so she got these big old curves awesome fine right that one. awesome fine you can leave that in the comments awesome fine situated here so some of these little fragile ones don't get broken with all these heavy whelks because whelks are really heavy compared to like sand dollars and baby's ears and angel wings and that sort of thing and i see some really pretty um shells up there but look at look at ch let's check out this piece of driftwood stuff look how it's been bored into by little shells the little um what type of shells do, do that bore and stuff I'm trying to find one. see the little holes that i'm talking about a lot right of here. the shells do that but very commonly you'll see these little pitic clams and like there's one right there a little tiny teeny one that looks like the tiny little baby angel wings um so they actually bore in almost like spiral their way in and create all these holes and they're not only using these this wood as nutrients but they're actually using it as their home live inside of it there's so much out here to see there's a ton to see what we got here mm. well that's kind of buried it looks like the it almost looks like the lid off of a, a storage compartment like a shrimp and boat the top for it or something the cooler lid big cooler lid made out of fiberglass and these little oyster sets they are so cool just to look at them and almost like clouds you can kind of make up in your head what you think it looks like i like to see the different oysters when they're grouped together and like the, that. that these oh. ones that have that purple in it i think that is more of what like people that are collecting them want, want that purple center right oh, yeah we all love to see lots of bright colors like look at that one wow what a weird color on that well 
That's strange. That like it's almost aqua. Oh, and he's still alive. Oh, That's man. probably why that aqua color's on him. It's more like an algae film, maybe. And no, it's not scratching off, but he does have a hermit in it. Yeah, you can see the little guy trying to come out. He's gonna have to go back in the water. Well, the tide's coming in right here. It'll be here in four minutes. But well, she's gonna put it in the water. That's okay. Put him back in the water. Come on, let's go. Let's get down this beach. Let's look for these beach treasures. You know what I'm talking about. Oh. We got to keep going. Just kidding. Joking around. So a little drill. Those are real common here to South Carolina. Little drill shells. And a little crab shell. And you can actually still see his eye stalks out of it. Crazy. Crazy. Can he flip him over? Yeah, and he can flip himself over, but look how pretty his shell is. Broken piece. Piece of the pin shell right there. So YouTube will bring you along whenever we post another video. Look how he was sitting up on that shell. And he is still alive. I see his little philia moving. Well, big wells, well, big well, better. A little whelk that's been in this pluff mud so long is almost black. He is broken up. Good home for a hermit crab. But I keep asking you, what are we going to do with all these shells? What are we going to do with all these shells? Well, stuff? look at them and love them. Oh, man. Oh. How many shells do you need to be able to just look at all the time? How many do you need? Well, I don't need any shells, but... <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> But I want as many as I find and that I want to keep because it's my prerogative. <laughs> See what I'm dealing with? I See what I'm what dealing with? Yeah, she, here it was, you know, 40 something degrees this morning in the 30s before this moment in time. But 40 something degrees, she's coming in there talking about, oh, I think we should go shallow. I'm like, what? Today? It ain't gonna be but 58 degrees, but here we are on this bear island looking for beach treasures. Here we go again. So look at this shell. It has actually been nutrients for whatever ate the snail that died out of here because a big boy um, grew, or a big, you know, animal, the, the big snail grew this shell. But look at the damage that a boring sponge has done all over the shell. All these little tiny, teeny holes from a boring sponge. And then look at all these other perfectly cylindrical holes. Those were made by other gastropods. So either whelks or olives or shark eye like moon snails. Something else was eating the shell too. Crazy. It's crazy how nature works. So many oysters. Oh, look at the orange colors in that one sitting right here. Pretty, pretty. Oh, and it is definitely um, free to take home because you see there's nobody home. All that's in there is sand and water. Look at the blues on that, baby. Wow. Gorgeous. Yes, indeed. So I see another sand dollar right here. 
up a little bit past it. Look how dark and purple it is. Cool. Definitely still alive. Cool. Leave it right here in the water head. Check these mud balls out. <laughs> just, just tossed around in the ocean, gathering little shells and stuff. Just a big clump of mud. Collecting sea treasures. Oh, I see a big one up there. Oh man, I see that big one too. Oh, there's a sand island. Another sand island. We'll leave that one. It's buried a little bit still. Yep. One more of those purple sea pansies. It's not covered in dirt, so you actually can probably see that one a little better. And you see his little stem, that's the part. He might actually even have it tucked down in the edge right there, right now. Got the shape of a little stingray to me. And a little one. Pretty. A little old two and a half, three, that's about a three inch, right? Yeah, probably three, three. inch. Oh, three inch, pretty gray color, right? Uh-oh, this guy's alive, man. This is the big one <laughs> that we had spotted. As I mentioned, guys, we are right after a storm. So this is a pretty common thing that we see if we come out here after a storm is that a lot of live creatures get washed up. Um, I don't know how many of you like to hear this or not, but I think I'm going to look into seeing if those well if we can keep them alive to eat i mean now uh, i look at a shell like a fish or any other thing out there you know if you're taking it to benefit the, the health and nutrients of your body you know that's a different circumstance but just to take it for a shell i would never do that so i think maybe you have to have a permit or something here I'm gonna have to research that, look into it. Maybe some of you know if um, in South Carolina, if we run across a, a welt like that, a live one out on the beach, uh, can we keep it? I know at the fish markets, and I know some of the commercial guys that crab, but they catch a lot of the live welts, or certain times of the year they catch a lot of live welts, just like we do in the shrimp trawl net. I do know there's a market for them. Um, whenever we purchase our shrimp trawling license, it's, it's on there whether we'd like to collect wealth or not. It's just another part of the form that you fill out and a part of the fee that you pay and we can collect those wells. So, so how, how would you feel about that now, you know, going back to if you found these shells and it become something that you ate, would that be wrong? Because I'm telling you, I've heard about this fried uh, whelk and the whelk salads and all that kind of stuff. And I think that would be pretty interesting to try to get one and try to you know cook it we actually have eaten one before it was really good it was very similar to like clam meat um but we know it's very very common down in like florida but that 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 was in a restaurant though well i mean it's very similar in in florida when you have like conch salads or conch ceviche and all that conch and whelk are very similar So we got a live sand dollar here and a angel wing. Getting closer and closer to the high tide rack as the beach waves push us closer. And we're hoping it's not going to be a real, really, really high tide because then when we would on our journey back down around to the boat, it would push us up uh, way into that beach line up there instead of being able to see those shells. So there is a point that we're gonna have to turn around when we think that the beach is getting to that point where we need to make it back to the boat and still be able to look through that rack line. So the water is already here. How long more do we need to go, Steph? this little pair of whelk it's broken but look how it is broken the little whorls and you can see straight through it that's cool
Yeah, I don't really know. I mean, I'd like to look as long as possible. I know you guys are, feel the same way. Um, it's hard to get us off the beach some days. <laughs> we'll stay as long as we can then. How's that? Awesome. I know the high tide is not so pretty late this afternoon, so. And what would we do if we was back at home sitting on that couch? Be wishing that we was right back out here, right? Right. Right, Steph, don't, don't rush the things in life that you love. Take it slow and easy through those times. Oh, look at this little pretty baby. Oh, it's still alive. I thought it might be. You can see that operculum in it. Spotted a... Looks like a ball of cord or fishing line or something right up here. And that's either that that welt right there is covered in barnacles. And check this guy out right here. Oh, a red sea star. A red sea star. And I'm pretty sure this thing is dead. I'm pretty sure it is dead. I'm looking for any type of movement. Make yeah, it, he's, he's washed up. Making really. sure that, you know, we don't touch it with our hands if he's got any life in him at all. No, you see how he's stiff. I'm pretty sure he's dead. But the Red Sea Star, take a look at this. He's a fat one since he is dead. And you can see how stiff he is. Like, he, he's not even limber whatsoever. So I'm going to rinse him off so you can see his bright um, red dot. And we we may even want to keep this guy and just you know get, let it dry out air dry yeah still i mean he's completely still look at that one real bright red orange dot in the center of the red sea star yeah, i wonder what is all of them do they all have that they do they all have that and is it always off center or uh usually yeah i'm not really sure that's uh, that's a question i mean another funky guy these are ones i like with all these little barnacles over them got lots of character oh that one's got a occupant there was a hermit crab in it and not only just... that but there is a bunch of little small slipper shells attached to it yeah and they are all alive because the slipper snail um the, it'll usually be a little open kind of like an oyster if they're dead and or whatever. I'm pretty sure by looking at those little barnacles on there that some of them are still alive also because they're still closed in. You know the little tiny barnacles. Like that one right there. Yeah when they get that hole right there that you can see down in it it's probably empty but the ones with that white right there kind of closed in those guys are still alive and then there's slippers on top of slippers on top of slippers here so this act this guy is actually home to i mean could be a hundred animals right now that's pretty cool this is what i was talking about this trash some kind of heavy 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 duty like fishing line Grass out of that I don't think it would have been like off of a like a fishing reel. It's much too thick for that. Yeah. It's more like if you were using some type of heavy leader line for sharks or for the leader part or something. And look at this elusive thing I have found. The pine cone. Odd to see out on the beach with no pine trees around. <laughs> but we have a lot of pine trees here in South Carolina. That's Tons of them. Tons that, of them. That's why I was being facetious and a little uh, right over in the distance the high -high. big long leaf pine it's very very common in our area and the pine are the biggest cash crop in South Carolina the farming cash crop right that's right long leaf pine and, and, and these other species that grow really fast nowadays check out Lob this guy Bollock. he's a Pin shell, and this is the sawtooth. You can see the little, I say it sometimes, but I don't always show you guys exactly what I mean. So you can see the little spikes that are sticking up and off of the tops of the pin shell sawtooth pin. That's so money. Oyster Look at that big here. blue whale right up oh, above yeah, that. That's gorgeous. 
He, it's sitting right up there. Yeah, we're gonna try to find it on the way back. Oh, how about if the water's up past that one, Steph? Yeah, Go get that, that big one. You think so? Oh, yeah. I see a big sea urchin right there. Oh, long, long. that would have been a really big channel well. Yeah, grab that big one. How about if we come back by and the water has beat us up to that level? While I'm here, I might as well get this little gray one. <laughs> I knew you would see too. Got a little gray that one. you like. There's a dark color in the side of that guy. Yeah, he's really dark. Beautiful. Let's, let's look at him with that water one time. See what this shell looks like wet. And you could use that mineral like we try to say to make your shells look moist and wet like this. Mineral. Look how it brings out that color when they're wet. Wow. Ooh. So he's chipped up a little here at the lip, but other than right that, there, stuff beside he you. is completely gorgeous. Right there, hold him up and let me see the bottom of him. There we go. Beauty. Wild beach hair don't care. That's right. It's just the way it is. And there is a little guy here. Oh, still alive. But check out that um, sea urchin right there with the wild foot. Actually, I see two sea urchins, and a lot of people don't realize this, but this is a sea urchin also. The sand dollars are in the sea urchin family. Um, for some reason, the, the sea urchin actually gets to be called the sea urchin, but both of these are in the same family. This little guy's mouth is so little it's hard to see, and this one's mouth's already deteriorated out. You can't see it, that little beak area that we showed you in the last video. But if you were to look at those, um, this one, if you can see it really close when they're really big, they're exactly the same. So just two different st styles of sea urchin. That's right. The sand doll is still alive, so I'm gonna leave him right there to keep on living his little urchin life. So they are all echinoids. For anybody did not know that. What was that? Echinoids. E-C-H-I-N-O-I-D. I might be spelling that wrong, but it's pretty close. That's okay. Close enough. Good oh, better than I would do. So the tide has been out and back, coming back in. But when this guy, it actually looks like he may be deceased. I see that his filia is really prickled up on this side. But just in case he's not, I'm not gonna mess with him. But you can see that little layer of sand where he's been trying to push. He would have started here. And he's been trying to push that direction. Um, is the, it's just the way a sand dollar moves in the sand. So he could make he it. He could still be alive, so I'm going to leave him right there. You see, we're right here at the water's edge now, so within just a few minutes, he's going to be getting this salt water back on him. I see a nice one here and a nice one down there. Look at the difference in the two. Left hand and right hand with these right here guys stuff. Let's take a little look at the two different ones we just found. Get some of that sand out. Look how skinny this one is compared to the wide circular area like of this. Maybe it's because it's that counter welt. I know this one looks like it's probably the counter welt too. So I'm not really sure why this one doesn't really have a voluptuous little loop on this side. That's right. y'all know why some are shaped that way let us know always leave us comments what is this here stuff so how clam just orange in color that's a bright orange put it up there next to some of the other shells and just see that orange color it's hard to see in the shadows but you can see that compared to these subdued colors or compared to these darker blue that orange is kind of bright Looks like some type of piece of tile. Yeah, 
Some sort of type of stone. Was it a stone tile? Looks like it. I don't really consider that was trash it? as much as like plastics. That's right. Turn into microplastic oysters and barnacles and all sorts of life can grow on that and it not be any damage to them. So I'm just going to leave that. We don't know if it'd be really correct or not to pick it up and take it with us, but we, we didn't do it. Each their own, like I say a lot, it's whatever your prerogative is, as long as you're not doing anything unlawful. And just as a reminder, it is unlawful to remove live animals from the beach. That's a perfect, perfect example of the five hole, keyhole sand dollar there. Sure is. Nice. And I like how it, it actually comes out and just kind of, it's so big Square that it, it kind of squares off in that bottom. Here's another one of those big whelps laying here with, this one actually looks like it just has a, a matrix build up on it. I'm not seeing like any live things that we'll have to check right down in there could be a slipper and if it is we'll just leave it oh ma'am look at look at yonder look at here i'm telling you there's so many shells down pretty lightning whelk and yep it is alive so much stuff to see I'm here today i'll rinse this one and put this one back It's a nice, nice, nice day to be out here on this beach. I mean, with the clothes and stuff that I have on right now, this 58 degrees and walking with the wagon and looking at these shells and talking with you guys, I'm comfortable. Yeah, I'm comfortable too. I actually had to shed a few layers from when we were riding. It's nice and bright and sunny and it's not super windy today as it has been the last and, couple and, of days. And the wind is actually coming from um, feels like like northwest which is coming across these dunes towards us instead of coming off the ocean and today out here past the breaking waves for the ones that's watching we're looking at like maybe i don't know two foot seas two foot seas offshore so it would be a great great day to run offshore like we've seen those guys coming in i'm sure they went out to fish some of the near shore reefs along the coast of South Carolina here, right? I guarantee you. These guys around here, they'll run right out of here in a jiffy and we will too sometimes out to these near shore reefs. You know, they position those reefs, you know, five to 10 miles per hour out from our coastline, sometimes 15. And they'll go out and they'll dro drop old rail cars. Uh, they used to do tires. I'm not sure if they do that anymore. Um, just uh, brig sections, uh, sink boats, sink big barges, and all that and create a habitat where the locals can run out to them and fish. So look at all this sea foam that's washed up over this guy right here. hoping the water would come back in but it looks like he's out for a second but look at the colors on that one nice and that orange on the inside Pretty. you can see that whenever it was flipped upside down a few moments ago and the water washing it around look at look at all the stuff look, i ain't look lying at it. look here do you see what little bit of stuff that we have compared to all these shells that you see laying here you see how many more shells that we're coming up on. We're just taking a small, small majority and we know, we never know what's out here in this big old ocean. We're still waiting to be found. Oh, 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 you got to get that. Oh, oh you got to get shell. that. Wow, this is like a holy grail wow. of shells for us oh. out here. Oh, man. Well, give them a look at it before I pick it up. I am. Just give me a cracked. minute to tell them, you know, at least 
you know with this being a ton shell we've only found like two or three like complete ones this one is complete but it's got a huge crack in it oh be gentle now with that being cracked like that stuff you think you could like get like a glue pin or something like that and go inside of that on the inside maybe and glue it back together or you just take your chances with it like it is i'm probably just gonna take our chances with it like it is and you better be very careful with it in there you better be very careful with it We're both pulling the wagon. Oh yeah, you know that. I can't wait for you to be watching this video stuff and hear me talking to you. Yeah, you helping pull this wagon too. It's completely full of dirt so I was trying to rinse it out really good. I was saying that I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna try to be very, very careful pulling this wagon. Uh, you think we should put it like right on top of that bag? On top of the camera from bag? Those up. There you go. Yeah. We don't want nothing to happen to that thing. I just want to be careful with the shell. <laughs> like if it, you know, little fun in the sun with you all. Having fun. Cutting up. Trying to get a laugh out of stuff. Nice. Nice one. This bleached out of not a lot of colors in it though. Are you gonna keep it? I am. I am. Color doesn't <laughs> <even> matter to <laughs> me. Look right here where my oh, shadow Look where my shadow's pointing right there. Right there. Yeah, right there. That that yes, yes. I see. That. that was actually my find. It was you Oh, did, you and did another something. red starfish. You did spot it before. Oh, right man, that that is one's a, in great shape. Oh man, let's take a look. Did we find that other one right down here? Yeah. This is the one that we had found earlier. And you can see what, what we were talking about how worn this shell is in comparison to this one. And that is the giant eastern murex species. Awesome, awesome, That's awesome, a great awesome. One. It ain't as big, but the condition of it better well look at those points how in the world does this thing get tossed around with all these other shells and stuff hitting it and it looked like every point on it is perfect this is one staff this is gonna have to sit up there by the ton shell okay <laughs> man yeah i'm gonna make sure i'll be careful with it And you can see this red sea star is deceased. You can see where he was laying up against something and the impression of that stick he was laying on has already deformed his body a little bit. Big moon snail and two deceased sea urchins. You can see that one's already sunken in where the stuff on the inside's coming out. And this one is already hollowed out. And a lot of people actually eat these. It's called uni, if I'm saying it correctly. U-N-I. Um, but in a lot of countries, not really so much in America that I see it, maybe, maybe some, but a lot of foreign countries, they have bigger ones, especially like in Hawaii, they have really big ones. And the uni, the, the growth on the inside of it, when that meat is fresh, and of course they're going to eat it, it's a bright orange color, actually, kind of like the sea star here. It's really pretty. I don't know how it would taste. I don't, I've, I'm not a very adventurous eater. I'm kind of a plain eater, so I don't even know that I would taste it, but maybe I would try it. They might, they might cook it right in the shell itself and I, make it like a soup. They know. actually eat it as sushi. Sushi? They eat oh, it raw. Man. So that'd be a challenge. Yeah, eating it raw. I'm not so sure about that. Are you um uh? I'm, I have to ask you, how many muraxes does that make today? Five. Yeah, I think we had five four. with that piece counting that piece, right? With I think a there was four. four with the piece. There was three pretty whole ones and the one piece that we unloaded already, and then two 
this one, the one that's really worn, and this really, really nice one. So I think we're up to six. Six with the six. Piece. Wow. Nice, nice, nice. I see another urchin right here. Do you want it? Yeah. It's over here. Well, it's about to the point that we we're gonna need oh, to turn. Wow. Look how oh man! And it is deceased. Do you want that? Yes, I definitely Look do. Look at the size of it. It is huge. That's one of the biggest one of those types of starfish that I've seen here. That thing is, you know, almost what eight to nine inches. He's from big. One side to the other, maybe. I'm I'm giving it at least nine. I'm thinking ten though. I have to be really careful, and I picked up this well, right if here. he if he needs to be real careful, why don't you put him right here on top of these shells? There you go. Well, I, he, you can kind of lay him out, him flat. out flat. Yeah. But there you go. An arc shell, pretty good size arc with a ton of wormhole matrix on it. Look right there. I'm, I'm, I'm watching out for these shells in this car and, and, and them starfish and stuff. I'm watching out for them. And where's the sea urchin you said? The sea urchin? Here for. I had seen it up this way stuff and you know that thing has blended in so good that I, I don't even see it now. It's amazing how you can lose track of some of these shells and stuff. You might find it but way. we might find it later. I'm still scanning but not seeing it. Uh oh, look at this angel wing stuff. Take a look at that one. Ooh, wait a minute. Oh, that one's alive. Alive. That angel wing right there. I bet that ain't alive. Oh no. You don't, you know, when you see one side of it like that, you know there's no way of that being alive now. There could be another shell that is alive attached to it, I guess, but one side of them there's an urchin is that dead. the one you saw that could have been the guy that i was seeing because i was angling up from the water's edge and i remember seeing a piece of driftwood and i remember seeing like some oyster shells and this and that and other and i'm you know could have been uh oh this was almost a pair and it's amazing that like by this cockle not have another side that it got actually busted oh. so with the, the hinge didn't come loose right here it busted it something just cracked that shell and i thought this one was going to be alive from the way it was positioned but it is not perfect beauty nice 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 our treasures are right here Did you? Oh my lord, no, no, this is this is uh, this is unheard of. What number is this? Let's see, that was six, so this will be seven today. Seven? Wow. What in the world? I'm telling you this storm that just came through. <laughs> it's left some things that you know we don't normally see for what reason I don't know. Maybe they just they're harder to get washed in and when these storms come through it just gives it that extra push to get that stuff across the bottom but that's why we like coming out after storms right yep and you can see how worn this one is i'm trying to get on so I don't have a in it. yeah i'm trying to get a turn around right here so you can see the little yeah. spikes on this one compared to the one we just found so this one is still the best condition one of the day so far turn around with them there you go there you go man 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 what a shell of a day huh what what you gonna do toad him in your hand no i was looking for um, um could one of those big uh cockles no i'll use the horseshoe shell to help hold this shape that up that one's too deteriorated look do, do, do. 
do, 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 do. That the GoPro battery just went dead and it reminded me that we need to end this part of this video, Steph. And at that very moment, Steph, look what she's holding. Look what she's holding. It is a little busted around the world in the front, but um, it does have some nice spikes on it. So pretty black color. And you can see where it's busted right there a little bit. And oh, it's busted across the back right and here. And the too, bottom. But that's okay. That's all right. So this that's is number right. eight for today. Number eight. Hope we find some more shells down this beach. If you want to watch the next part, like, subscribe. We'll see you guys.